Okay, so previously we learned how to find absolute maxes and mins from a graph. Now we're going to do the same thing algebraically. So one vocab term, a critical number. So the definition of a critical number is any place where the derivative is zero or the derivative does not exist. And we learned that those are the only places in the interior where an absolute max or min, min can occur, or it could also be the endpoints. Okay, so these are the steps we're going to use for finding absolute maxes and mins algebraically. So step one is to find all critical numbers. Okay, so we're going to go to this first example and just practice finding our critical numbers. So it's wherever the derivative is zero or does not exist. So I'm going to use the product rule here to find my derivative. So f prime of x is going to be the derivative of the first, which is 4, times the second, plus the derivative of the second, bring down the 1 half, reduce the power by 1, don't forget chain rule on the inside is 2x, all times the first. Now, before you start multiplying things out, we're going to need to simplify it to find our critical numbers. We want to factor. So the GCF here is going to be x squared minus 16 to the negative 1 half. That leaves me with the 4 and x squared minus 16 to the first. This 1 half and 2 will become 1 plus this is gone. I have an x and a 4x plus 1. Okay, I'm going to drop this to the bottom. So the x squared minus 16 goes to the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and multiply all this out and combine like terms, and it's going to be 8x squared plus x minus 64. Okay, once I have my derivative, now to find my critical numbers, I need to set the derivative equal to 0 or does not exist. So the does not exist piece is easy because it's whatever makes the bottom 0. So that would be x equals 4 and negative 4. I also need to set the top equal to 0. And this does not factor nicely. Um, I'm going to have you guys use your calculator to come up with it. And it ends up being these two decimals, negative 2.8916. Now, you have to be careful. Critical numbers are actually points on the original function. So you want to make sure it's in the domain of the original. But notice, if you plug both of these numbers in, you can't take the square root of a negative number. So these are not in the domain of the original function, so they're not your critical numbers. So these are your only critical numbers to the function. Okay, we're gonna skip over two, and now let's go ahead and find the extrema. So extrema means max or min, and if I don't put that word absolute in front, it implies absolute. So I'm asking you to find absolute maxes and mins given these functions. So we're going to do it all algebraically. So step one is you need to find all the critical numbers. So that means find your derivative. And there's no place where, it's going to, where it does not exist because it's not a fraction. So you're just going to set it equal to zero. This factors nicely. So I can see that my critical numbers are 2 and negative 2. The only places where you could possibly have an absolute max or min are critical numbers and endpoints. So these are the only places I need to check. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these values, I'm going to take my endpoints, I'm going to take my critical numbers, and I'm going to plug them back into the original function, so back into here. And if you do that, these are the values you'll get. You'll get 9 for this, for 5 you'll get 65, for 2 you'll get negative 16, and for negative 2 you'll get a positive 16. So these are the only places where a pop absolute max or min can occur. So from these possibilities, your max has to be the highest value. So 65 is the highest, so that's going to be my max. And my lowest value is negative 16, so that's my min. So if I only ask for maxes and mins, make sure you only give me the y values. You can write it in function notation like this and just put an arrow next to it. But do not write it as an ordered pair. Okay, let's look at the next one. This is a trig one. So same thing, we're going to start with our derivative. Derivative of the 2 sine is 2 cosine of x. The derivative of the negative cosine gives me a positive sine of 2x. Don't forget chain rule on the angle, so I need a 2 there as well. I'm going to set this equal to 0 to find my critical numbers. Now, notice these angles are different. This is an x, this is a 2x. So this is where I need to use my trig identity to do a substitution. 
So sine of 2x is the same as 2 sine of x cosine of x. So there's already a 2 here, so this is going to become 4 sine of x cosine of x. Once you get to here, now you can factor. I can factor out a 2 cosine of x and find the two places where it's equal to 0. So either cosine of x is 0 or sine of x is negative 1 half. Your angles, I'm only looking for the angles between 0 and 2 pi, would be pi halves, 3 pi halves, 7 pi 6, and 11 pi 6. And again, these are all my critical numbers. There's two endpoints, so I'm going to plug these all back into the original function to find my highest point and my lowest point, and that will give me my max and my min. And you can plug these into the calculator real quick on your table feature to find these values real quick. This is negative 3 halves. This is f of 2 pi. So if I look, now you can have more than one place where the max or the min occurs, but your max, the highest point on the graph is 3, and the lowest point on your graph is negative 3 halves. It's fine that it happens at two different x values, but your max and your min should be your y values. Okay, one last example here. Okay, same thing. Start with my derivative. So bring down the two-thirds, reduce the power by one. And now this is where you need to simplify. So I'm going to drop that down. So there's no place where the derivative is equal to zero, but there is a place where the derivative does not exist. It's whatever makes the bottom zero. So my critical number is only at x equals 1. So that means on the original graph, there's actually a cusp going on here. Okay? And then these are my two endpoints. So I'm going to go ahead and take my critical number and my two endpoints, plug it back into the original function, and you should get 2, 3, and 6. So highest y value is your max value, lowest is your min.